Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video, I'm going to take a look at the most popular shaman archetype on the ladder right now, which is Elemental Shaman. After Even Shaman got nerfed, people kind of stopped playing it, although you can check out my earlier Even Shaman video, which shows that Even Shaman is actually still a perfectly capable deck after the nerfs, and according to statistics it is also the highest performing shaman deck at the moment. However, this is the most played one, it is also the second best performing one, which means that it's slightly below 50% on HS replay. Just to set your expectations, I had somewhat over 60% win rate playing this myself, but of course it also depends on the types of matchups you run into. I had a lot of trouble against Detrattle Hunter in particular, but not, nothing else felt too bad to be honest. Elemental Shaman is a very grindy, very minion heavy deck. Basically in most matchups you're just grinding your opponent out on value, because you get tons and tons and tons and tons of random stuff and eventually you will use them to overpower your opponent and run them out of resources. You get random elementals from Earthen Might, you get random elementals from Menacing Nimbus, you have 1 million and 1 battle cries that deal some damage, you can get some more elemental from Servant of Kalimos, you can crumble some of your stuff back into your hand and use their battle cries again. Then you have Hagatha the Witch, which is going to start giving you even more stuff, and so every time you play these minions you also get spells to go alongside them, and you have Shudderwok for a big refill and a bunch of pew pew going randomly around the board. Overall this deck plays far more like a control deck than like anything else, you're mostly just defending, building up your value base and grinding your opponent out. Obviously there are some exceptions to that, because for example you have no protection against one turn kills, other than just trying to get the hex on those key minions if they happen to be on the board, but overall yeah, your odds against that are pretty weak. You have some excellent grinding tools, of which Hagatha the Witch is the best. So also Hagatha the Witch, do you keep that in the mulligan or not? Your desire to keep Hagatha goes higher the grindier the matchup is. If you're facing something like a warrior, it's going to be odd warrior, you always want to keep Hagatha. In fact, you prioritize Hagatha, you mulligan everything else for Hagatha against warrior. And if you're facing any other deck that you know is going to be a control deck, then you also want to keep Hagatha. But in many other cases, in some cases you really need to have your early game. Your good early game is Firefly, Nimbus, Tar Creeper, Earth and Might. Just some really solid cards. The existence of Fireplum Harbinger in this deck makes for some interesting mulligan decisions in games where you want early game, because sometimes you have Harbinger offered and then something like 4 or 5 mana slot cards and then maybe you can make a nice curve out of those, so you start with Harbinger and then you get to play a couple of cards early because of that and that's going to be such a good tempo swing. And then there are the matchups where you have to be the beat down. These are the matchups against the OTK decks, something like Priest. Priest is just going to kill you if you give them enough time. So against Priest you want value. You want some actual power, so you're not looking for a Firefly. You're looking for stuff like Menacing Nimbus together with an Earthen Might. You're looking for Servant of Kalimos. You're looking for cards that give you more cards to play and that can also threaten the Priest's life total. Overall, pretty much anything can happen when you play this deck because there are so many random effects when you play this. And when you play this, you also need to think like a control player for the most part. You're trying to figure out, okay, I use this resource to kill that, I use this resource to kill that, do I have some resources left, do I have elementals left so that I can maintain my elemental chain, how am I going to generate my next random elementals, what effects do I want to replay, because you have stuff like Box Slosher, and Box Slosher can be great on something like a Tolvis Stone Shaper, create a really big taunt with Divine Shield, but sometimes you also want to Box Slosher something like Glacial Shard, just to freeze something one more time on the board. And you need to recognize these points in time and these matchups, where you have to be the aggressor, and when you can just play your standard regular grinding game. Against Hunter, for example, you start off by being on the defensive, you start off by answering their threats, but then if they get something like an early Rexa, it can be very difficult to outgrind an early Rexa. Then you have to think about, okay, are there ways for me to gain tempo, go wide on the board, and contest the Hunter's life total while he's using a lot of value. 
if you enjoy it when random things happen in Hearthstone, then this can be a pretty good deck to play. And of course, it can also be challenging to recognize what you can do with all your random resources. But on the other hand, there is a certain lack of direction when you're playing this deck, because you have to piece together the win in every game, just by doing the grind, getting more and more resources, and figuring out how to put those together. If you enjoy this content, then please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more. And now, let's go take a look at some sample games with this Elemental Shaman build that really showcase how random things can get when you play it. I think I might even keep this hand because I had the Fire Bloom Harbinger. Not spending the coin yet, no. Let's see. So if I Harbinger this turn, this will cost four. Harbinger this turn seems fine. But I might also be able to get an expensive elemental from the Nimbus. Um, I'll play the Harbinger. Let's try this approach. Okay, okay. Then I'll go with the Nimbus. Get a random elemental to my hand. And I'll go with the Earthenmite on the Harbinger. Get another random elemental to my hand and start applying some pressure. You should have some fire plume hope for a hex. It, it was bigger chance to get hex from the far side. I played the far side and I had a hex left in the deck, and that was a bigger, lot bigger percentage than playing the fire plume. Well, if I play this and he plays, well, it doesn't always kill the board. Well, let's try with the servant. I think I'm picking up some blaze callers. I kind of like place callers. We can of course play Mass Hysteria here. That's an option. If these two fight first, then it doesn't kill the board. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. We're going in with the Fire Elemental here to kill the Ziliax. And hit some face again. Mass Hysteria. If these two fight first, then the board is not going to be cleared. <laughs> Unlucky. Can't win every time. But I do want to keep this pressure going, so we play scholar him in the face. This matchup can this is the OTK priest, this can only be one true tempo. I kind of would need the murmuring elemental. Oh, it's actually a wall priest. I didn't see that coming. I did not see that one coming. Okay. So we'll start with the menacing Nimbus. Frost elemental. Might be useful later. We'll play stone shaper out there. I think I need need to take a hit over there. Do I want a firefly on this board? I might as well put one over there. I guess it's fine. Just be resurrecting this fellow, I guess. He didn't want to draw first. Oh, he just... okay. Alright. So I have 10 from hand from the Blaze Caller next turn. So this is Kalimus' face. If he doesn't heal his face, I kill him next turn. Okay. Alright, and now he has to heal his face. Battle Kanak. Thank you so much for your support. Yep, that's the wrong move. Then the murmuring elemental. Then the place corner face. Dead priest. Maybe I don't. I'll try with the Firefly and Nimbus. Let's see. Glacial Shard is slightly lower win rate than the other cards that you keep. Hunt to get two cards. Let's see what happens here. 
Hunter just has so many ways to punish you, no matter what you do. Oh, it's a Deathrattle Hunter. Okay. But do I have tools to fight him? I can just value trade into the Firefly. Unless I, unless I freeze the KL asset and do this, but I'm not putting enough power on the board. I can't beat the Death Rattle Hunter by being fast. I don't have the tools here. There's another card that he kept. <laughs> so, Devil Sore Egg. Oh, the Arcandrel shot. Great, great top deck. Very powerful. I think I just need to hit face. I don't think I can really afford to start trading here. I need to deal damage. But I still don't think I'm fast enough here. I mean, I have something going for me because I have Hex and I have Hagata, but that's not going to beat. That's not going to beat all the stuff that's going to come. Because there's going to be a lot of stuff. Okay. Interesting approach. Hi, Diano. Well, a little bit weak, but getting better. Let's just trade away the board. He can flanking strike the Phoenix. Feels bad, man. But he can also flanking strike this. So there are no good, no good resolutions here. I'll just trade down the board here. Now if he has a simple flanking strike, it gives him ward control. And all of the cards that I have are very, very expensive. <laughs> and I don't I don't think I can take a long game against Detrital Hunter. It just doesn't work that way. Well lucky I guess. Maybe I can light a little bit here. Picking up a Firefly. I can play a Firefly against this archetype, there's no Unleash. I want to play just one at Hero Power. I can find Taunt or Healing Totem. I want to do it like this, and I want to keep some cards in hand against this Witchwood Grizzly. So that it doesn't grow too large. Not that I can do a whole lot about it, but still. Five cards in hand means that it's still going to be a 3-7. And I have only 6 damage on board. Well, uh, it's going to be a 4-8 because of the Kelaset power. Oh, that's sweet. Then I'm going to have to hex this one, right? I think I'm going to have to hex that one. I don't like it, but I think I have to. Yeah, this might hurt later. But I don't see an option. Mm, Harbinger. And push face. I need to be very aggressive in pushing face here. Oh dear. That's a that's a really good minion. And also Kelaset buffed. Ouch. Perfect. So no great crumble turn. He's healing up the fool from this one. I can't even prevent that. I mean, I have to play Kalimos this turn. Seven is not his power turn yet. Yeah, that's the way it has to go, unfortunately. I'm not happy about this. But I need to do this. I need to get that Kalimos out there. And I need to push face. He was able to heal eight from that. But I don't have enough. 12 plus 6 is 18, he's at 20. That 8 healing was... Uh, if that wasn't the kill I set buffed Ciliax, I would have had a lethal setup here potentially, but... No, I don't have anything. Spider bomb, eh? Oh no. Does it kill the Kalimus? Of course it kills the Kalimus. Unlucky. So it's time to play the Hagata. Then the Flame Elemental. But turn 8 is his power turn. So this can go very, very poorly. But this is everything I can do. This keeps my elemental synergies alive. 
And I start getting some random spells. Which might be enough. 8 is his power turn. So now if he has the Katrina too. <laughs> So, level 7, can't get the grumble out there to kill it. A path lit. Oh, well, I think I need to start with Servant. Brothers, my Stone Sentinel isn't terrible. Draw? Does drawing help me in some way? It could. I might pick up a hex, for example. But I did not pick up a hex. Then I want to play some more stuff. Just to get random spells. I want to get random spells that wipe out his board. But I couldn't. Eight cards in hand. Fated arrow. Well, that was a surprise. And an egg. Okay, okay. So far, so good. I can play Stone Sentinel. It will kill the King Dread. And I probably have to do that over playing a Hex here. Then I will not have Elemental Synergies active for next turn. That's a huge problem. I still think I have to. Okay, so I'm alive. Oh, Judge Devil Source is so good if he can find a cube for that. My elemental synergies are not active right now. So. I guess I'm losing. Yeah, play scholar is not active, so I need a I need a good random spell. I need to play the grumble here. That's not a good random spell. I mean, grumble is going to get the taunt. Thing is, just do I play the murmuring elemental also? But even if Crumble has stoned, I'm still dead. Yeah, that's not, just not enough. Just not enough. Do I need a Hex against Rogue? Probably not. They're not playing Edgar nowadays. So let's see. Just holding on to the Nimbus. Hi, Carcase. <laughs> oh, it's a meme, Rogue. Well, memes meet each other then. That's going to be a Thief Rogue. Terrible archetype, but someone's got to play it. He's touring for the Spectral Cutlass, I assume. Okay, got an Ice Walker. Yeah, that's a Thief Rogue, alright. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. The Fire Blue Phoenix the Shiny Finder. So, facing Blink Fox on even ground at the moment. This is going to have a lot of value in that deck with the Academic Espionage. If he has any weapon buff for that, oh, he did. That's unfortunate. That means that I just don't get the Blink Fox kill either. Well, this turn is pretty interesting with the fire plume. I could do fire plume. No, I can't do fire plume in Tolver. Tolver is not an elemental. So this turn has to be just the servant of Kalimos. Probably into a hot spring guardian, actually. I might need that taunt minion. But now he has 
he already has two shaman cards, so he can increase the durability of the cutlass. Of course, it's still one damage shot of killing the servant, but I suppose he can get there with three shaman cards. Prepping, prepping a sprint. Oh, prepping a fan. Hi, Masitarko. Well, not much, but a little. Having to play, play against me in Dex is pretty annoying, but sometimes you just have to. Well, I could play Fire Elemental and kill the Blink Fox. Or I could play the Fire Plume Harbinger and the Stone Shaper. Then I would have a 5 mana, 5 mana Fire Elemental in hand. Yeah, I think I like that. Let's go with the Har Harbinger and Stone Shaper. This means that next turn I can play Fire Elemental and something like a Hot Spring Guardian or Dark Reaper. And he needs to find the Academic Espionage soon, because he's currently not having a ton of... I think he should have traded. I really thought he would trade. Okay, fine that he doesn't. That is a 5 damage scutless though, so... So I will kill off that one there. Get the fire elemental. And then I can play a Dark Reaper. I could also freeze his face. Prevent him from using the cutlass next turn. But I think Dark Reaper is good enough. He has two Shaman cards, three other cards. He needs to find Sprint or Academic Espionage, something like that. And it's Academic Espionage off the top. Ha! <laughs> Immediately when I say that now he needs to find stuff or he's in trouble, he finds the stuff. Good for him, I suppose. So I could trade. Do I have a reason to trade? Yes, Vanish in that deck, right? So I could, I could freeze his face. I think I like this. So I hit face, I hit face. I freeze his face. I heal my face. I box slosher the two foretold back to my hand. And then I can play the bigger 4 6 stone that heal my face again. So now I'm gaining a lot of tempo here. And his face is frozen, so he cannot heal up right now. Now he needs to have that Vanish or something available. Or I guess Alakir the Wind Lord might do. Alakir is a formidable obstacle. And that is enough to keep him alive. Because I only have 12 damage here. And I also need to get through the Alakir. So then he gets to use the Cutlass again. And keep healing up. Unfortunate. So now he can keep healing up, which is of course good for him. Do I have any reason to play any other cards? He goes to 16 with just the Cutlass. 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 plus 3, 18. If he can kill some stuff, there's almost no chance for me to push through. I think playing more minions on the board is not productive. Let's see. Oh, these are pretty good discoveries, by the way. Alakir and Kalimus are not cards that you are regularly being offered from Hallucination. Healing to full. Having Kalimus on the board. Almost full anyway. 12 plus 5, 17. Oh, a completely random grumble. What's there not to like? That's pretty solid stuff. Okay, so he can Kalimus again next turn. What if he does Kalimus for 3 AoE? I would have to freeze his face, right? All of this stuff is going to hit him in the face. He goes down to 8. I box slosher this one. You belong to the 
My box slasher, that one. That means that I can he freeze his face, which will then prevent him from healing. Sure, he can Kalimos for AoE. But if he Kalimos is for AoE, that doesn't. He's dead. Because Crumble can't push through. Unless he has something more. So, I suppose he has something more. Okay, he has test too. Okay. And he gets a taunt minion. But I get a Kalimos. And I win. I was able to beat the meme. I'm gonna try with Servant Keep. But I did need to find one of these earlier game minions. I mean, I could have kept the Dark Reaper, but Dark Reaper would not be power on the board. I'm rather looking for Menacing Nimbus or even just Firefly. Well, let's see. What kind of priest is this going to be? Well, that's the Nimbus. A bit too early. I can't really play it now, though. Because if I played on two, I still can't get the servant down next turn. Oh, that's awkward. So it's an OTK priest then. It could be a combo priest. Well, I could play Nimbus into Coin Tolver. He gets the kill on the Nimbus though. I suppose I can afford that. I suppose I can afford this. Of course, see what's... I mean, it could be a combo priest. Lots of things can happen here. I didn't have an immediate answer to this. I didn't want to hex this yet, because if this is an OTK priest and not a combo priest, then hexing this wouldn't actually be very useful. If it's a combo priest, the pure old-fashioned combo priest, then it might be a little bit more useful, but... So he gets to keep the Radiant Elemental around. I still don't know the archetype. Well, now it looks like... I'm actually not sure. Double Shadow Visions already. That's a little bit scary. Mass Dispel, but that is used in OTK too, so I still don't know if it's OTK or a combo. And I must not hurry too much. Hurrying too much is bad for me. I don't need the Dark Creeper out there yet, I can go with these. I still have the Hex available. But of course if he is... If he is Combo Priest, he's not going to start buffing things up just... Randomly here. He could play a Witchwood Grizzly. This turn might give me some insight into what he's playing. Or it might not. Sometimes it's hard to say. I do know that I'm killing this Radiant Elemental here. I can still have a Shadow Madness. Well, lots of things can happen. Do I want the Mage spell? Am I ready to give up on the Glacial Shard? I think I probably am. Casting Hex twice isn't useful. I suppose the Phoenix will be better. Mage spell. Shoes isn't bad. I like, so I do like this, so Mass Hysteria doesn't kill this board. He has two Shadow Vision cards in hand though. So that is a little bit scary. But I also have an opportunity to be scary here with the runes. What if he just plays Velen into those runes? Because he could. I mean, these are always going face, I know that much. He could have Psychic Scream for next turn. I mean, I could just Box Slosher the Servant of Kalimus back to hand. Go for even more value grinding. Is there something I can do with the runes? Scare him a little. 8 damage. 
No, there's not enough. I can still play the runes. Runes don't kill Velen, although they do put it down to one health. So they're they're wasted essentially if he just plays Velen into those. That was a surprising servitude. Now it's confirmed that no, it's still not confirmed that it's OTK. I could play the six seven servant of Kalimus. He can have to. He can have a lot of stuff. But I do need always need to kill the Radiant Elemental. Fireplume Harbinger is pretty interesting. I think that's my pick here. I always need to kill those. Those are really too scary. So there's currently seven power on board. I play the Fireplume Harbinger. Yeah, I can play the Harbinger. It's fine. This is fine. He might scream this board. He already knew it wasn't a counter spell. Now he was concerned it would be a spellbender. Okay, that's fine. Eight damage, eight plus six, not quite there. Need more. Need more damage. Why do I just jump the Kalimus out there? Have it deal six this turn. I have some interesting top decks that I can get. None that are actually going to kill him though. But I think I'm just going to jump the Kalimus here. Deal six damage to him. Let's try this. You want the dragon version of this shaman? The dragon version of this shaman is significantly worse than this version. Oh, my runes backfired. I know the dragon version, but it's significantly worse. You can take a look at the wind rates and you can see. Well, my runes was bad. So, now I allowed him to kill Velen. This might, this might end up hurting a lot. Suppose I want to grumble here. Also want some other stuff, just to have some stuff out there. So that Kalimus wouldn't necessarily die if there's like mass hysteria. The calm before the storm. More fire elementals, okay. Give a fire blue phoenix to the face. Alright. This is cloning gallery priest, yes. That is guaranteed. I've known that for a while. The question is just how do I kill him? Do I find a way to kill him? My runes backfired because of the Tvelen Spirit Lash play. The stuff. Very nice Ciliax. Okay. That was a really good Shadow Essence, by the way. It was by no means guaranteed that there would be a Ciliax. <laughs> but sometimes there is a Ciliax. I think I have to play Hagata. Yeah, but I, I would need to hex the Mali. That's the thing. I was hoping to hex the Velen. That would be even more important. But hexing the Mali might do. Need to play the Hagata here. Start getting random stuff. Keep the elemental synergies going. Let's see. Okay, so that Maligos is e eating the Hex. That's good at least. 
Well, it just eats the hex. Then what? Fire elemental on the board, I suppose. Yeah, fire elemental on the board it is. Okay, I denied the Malikos, but there's still Velen. There's still Velen, and then there is the Vivid Nightmare. There's the real Ciliax. So many Ciliaxes, but Velen, Vivid Nightmare, and then the damage spells. That's still going to kill me, right? Rockbiter is not going to help. Do I just want to crumble these back into my hand? That would actually remove some of the threats currently available. But I think it might still be a good play. I'll do that. And this gives me more tools that I can use to deal with his boards if he doesn't get a full OTK. But the problem is that he still has... I mean, he spent one servitude, so he can't do double servitude. But he can do servitude, vivid nightmare, and have double Velen. And that would be lethal. So... It's not looking great. He's just biding his time and at some point he's going to use those resources. Well, that's 20 damage right there. Okay, let's give this minion Wind Fury. Let's give it Rock Fighter. Let's put 20 damage to his face. And let's play Fire Elemental. And then let's play Fire Blue Phoenix. And suddenly we won the game. Yay! Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, Please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.